सहनावतु सहनम भुनक्तु सह वीर्यम करवा बहै तेजस्वी नावधि तमस्तु मां विद्विषा बहै ओम शांति 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 साइरम एवरीवन um as you all know we are continuing with the study of the bhagavad gita shlokas uh, we're looking at the shlokas which uh, were not covered by swami during his discourse uh, of the samashavas in 1973 uh, we will uh, continue <coughs> This is the thirteenth shloka in the Bhagavad uh, among the published works. That's what you would see. We'll start. Kāte kānta dhana gata chinta vātula kim thava nāsti niyanta trijagati sajjana sangati reka bhavati bhavar navatarane nauka. काते कांता धन गत चिंता वातुल किम तव नास्त नियंता त्रिजगति सज्जन संगति रेखा भवति भवार नव तरणे नवका काते कांता धन गत चिंता वातुल किम तव नास्त नियंता त्रिजगति सज्जन संगति रेखा भवति भवार नव तरणे नवका इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्रोनंसिएशन इफ यू लुक एट द फर्स्ट लाइन काते कांता दिस ध इज द फोर्थ लेटर इन द द क्लास ऑफ साउंड्स सो इट हैज एस्पिरेटेड सो इट ध कांता धन गत चिंता वातुर किम there are no aspirated consonants in the third line also there are no aspirated consonants in the fourth line bhavati the first letter bha is the fourth letter in the per class of sound so it has to be aspirated bhavati and in the next word also bhavarnava the first letter bha is aspirated same as the first one has to be aspirated. So, bhavati bhavarnava tarani nauka. Uh, we we'll look at the sandhi split now. So, if you take the first line, kate, there are no sandhi changes. If you look at the next word, which is a very long compound word, um, there are no internal sandhis which change anything, but there are four distinct words kanta, dhana, gata, and chinta. So I have hyphenated them so for easily and looking at them. In the next one, also, there are no 
ಸಂಧಿ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ವಾ ತುಲ ಕೆಂ ತವ ನಾಸ್ತಿನಿ ಅಂತ ಇನ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ನೋ ರಿಯಲ್ ಚೇಂಜಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ಸಂಧಿ ತ್ರೀ ಜಗತ್ತಿ ಅಡ್ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಹೈಫಿನೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಪಲ್ಸಮ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಸಜ್ಜನ ಸಂಗತಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಐ ಹೈಫಿನೇಟೆಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಕಂಪೌಂಡ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಎಂಡ್ ಸಂಗತಿ ಹಿ ದ ವಿಸರ್ಗ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ and so it becomes sangati reka ir plus a becomes re so it becomes sangati reka uh, in the next line also um there are very few changes bhavati there's no change bhavarnava tarane is a compound word but internally uh, there's a small change bhava and arnava verb plus a becomes va Okay, Bhavarnava, Tarane, and Nauka, that's a simple word. We look at the word-to-word meaning. <laughs> Ka te kanta. Ka means who actually, who in feminine form is, or what also. As said, mentioned in Sanskrit, uh, the words take on gender uh, independent of what they refer to depending on what it refers to uh, depending on the gender of the word it refers to uh, ka becomes feminine have you given the word what okay um, so when we go through you will understand basically it's ka relates to what oh i see chinta ka chinta is the uh, what concern you know that's a uh, meaning what is this concern what is the concern okay ka chinta what is it referred to so we'll say te te also means you are what is this concern of yours okay ka te chinta what is this concern of yours ka means but te means your chinta means concern worry or your thinking in obsession obsessive thinking all that is referred to by chinta i will just use the word concern for that but there are multiple degree or levels of meaning for that word chinta concern worry obsession all that would relate to chinta that means the mind is continuously dwelling on something chinta what is this concern kanta dhana gata gata means gone it means it has gone or it is the thinking is always going towards something going towards what is it going towards kanta and dhan kanta is just woman a wife or someone who on whom somebody has a desire okay woman and dhana is money or wealth okay so the first line says what is this concern of yours uh, where you always continuously thinking about woman and money kaate cha kanta dhana gata chinta the next one is vaathula a vaathula uh, is is an addressing somebody you know it's called the seventh not seventh sa prabho uh, you are basically you are uh, addressing some you calling out some okay sambodhana vibhakti it's called prathama sambodhana vibhakti that means you addressing somebody so this verse is actually addressing someone by the name by the term vatula oh mad fellow okay vatula khate kanta dana kata chinta o foolish one or mad one what is this concern of yours over 
women and money. Then the next line, next word is Kim. Kim is also like Ka, it's what is the meaning? Because it's a neuter gentle one, so I can simply say what in English? Kim. Tava. Tava is you are also. Nasti. Na asti means does not exist. Nasti means non existence or absence. I don't know if any of you would have heard uh, Mata nasti, Pita nasti, and so on. So it's non existence. In this case, I have taken it like a uh, now one actually. Niyanta. Niyanta is someone who guides or controls or restrains you or guides you. So it's like a master, someone who will, you know, who is able to control your tendency. Kim Tava Nasti. Kim. What? You know, Kim also means, it's a rhetorical question. You understand? Kim means, what? Don't you have a, don't you have someone or something which will restrain you? Or restrain this mind? Kim Tava Nasti Niyanta. So that way also you can look at it. What? Don't you have somebody who controls you? So there are two questions posed to this Vatula, the mad one. Okay. Then the third line starts with Tri Jagati. Tri Jagati is the Jagati is seventh Vibhakti of the word Jagat. Jagat is a simple noun. Jagati means in the world. Tri Jagati means in the three words. Okay. Trijagati in the three worlds. Sajjana Sangati. Sajjana. Sajjana can be further split into Sat and Jana. I have not done that here. Sajjana means good people. Sangati, actually association uh, or meeting or company of Sajjana. Sangati is company association with Sajjana. Sajjana Sangati. Okay. Sangati means, Gati means destination also. Sangati means in a good way having the destination of Sajjana. That means you go and your final destination should be that. That's what you know if you want to simply. Um, break the literal meaning but overall such an sangati is association with good people eka eka is one in a feminine sense you know there are ekam ekaha eka all of them relate to one but in this case it has taken on a feminine attri attributes okay with gender yes masculine feminine so this is a feminine one, okay? Because eka relates to nauka, okay? One, bhavati. Bhavati means exists. Eka nauka bhavati. Eka nauka bhavati. Nauka is boat. What is this boat? Bhava arnava tarane. It's uh, seventh vivakti because sometimes see sometimes the uh, sentence structure in Sanskrit will be slightly different the way it is in English. Uh, so you know you may wonder why why the ending of vivakti and so on. But um, we'll let just understand as is. Eka nauka bhavati bhavarnavatarani. So in the crossing of the, in the crossing means actually tarane. Bhava means existence. Arnava means ocean. So there's only one 
boat is available for us to cross the ocean of existence, which is Sajjana Sangati. Uh, only company with good people can give us an ability to cross the ocean of uh, existence, samsara, in other words. Okay. We will look at um, some this. Uh, I have given a summary because uh, it seemed a bit uh, confusing, so I have put it in a summary. So maybe I will give going forward summaries also. Because a couple of times people have asked me, so I will. Oh, mad one, what is this concern and worry about wealth and woman? What is this absence of someone to guide and restrain you? In the three worlds, the only one boat to cross the ocean of existence is the company of noble people or spiritual people. Okay. Uh, we'll look at Swami's discourse excerpts now. Several noble souls have worshipped God in different ways, some by doing penance, some by charity, some even by sacrificing their lives. Some others dedicate their lives for teaching and propagating the sacred scriptures by touring the entire world. Nevertheless, they could not win God's grace and love. Why? Samsara Sagarotare Sajjana Sevanam Vina. One cannot cross the formidable ocean of samsara ex by serving the noble souls. It is only by serving noble souls and great men that one can attain the power of penance. No sadhana, spiritual exercise, other than selfless service will enable one to attain divinity. The punya merit of our students is indeed great. They have been able to have the darshan, sparshan, and sambhashan of several noble souls and they and obtain their grace. In fact, several people in Bharat, India, sanctified their lives by such darshan, sparshan, and sambhashan. Referring to, referring to Sant Asaram Bapu, Swami said. Just to pause here, Swami invites uh, various uh, spiritual figures from India to come and talk to the students during Samashava. So at this point in time, I think Sant Asaram Bapu, one of the, uh, one of the uh, noble souls in India was invited. So Swami is referring to him. He has taken a lot of trouble to come over here, all the way from Gujarat, to address our students. It is their good fortune. He has a kind and loving heart. His teachings are very essential for our students. In an age when faith and devotion have eroded and atheism has become the order of the day due to the effect of Kali, the age we are in, such teachings are very much necessary, especially for the students to keep them on the right track. Dear students, you cannot get fulfillment in life by merely having darshan or sparshan or sampashan of noble souls. I will read again. You cannot get fulfillment in life by merely having the darshan or sparshan or oh, some version of noble souls. Uh, just for, I don't know if I, I think all of you may know, darshan means the vision or the sight of somebody. Sparshan is the touch of somebody. Sambhashan is the conversation with somebody of noble souls. You will attain peace and tranquility only when you have all the three. In order to sanctify human life, the Navaveda Bhakti, 
nine forms of devotion are very essential. They are Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, that's listening, singing, contemplating on Vishnu, Pada Sevanam, serving his lotus feet, Vandanam, salutation, Archanam, worship, Dasyam, servitude, Sneham, friendship, and Atmanivedanam, self surrender. Man can sanctify his life by Shravanam, Mananam, Nididhyasanam, listening, recapitulation, and contemplation. Today's children are very intelligent, but only when they put their intelligence to proper use can they make their lives sanctified. And spirituality is the only path that can make one's life sanctified. Today, student, today's students are, however, putting their intelligence to wrong use and are wasting their time engaging themselves in vain argumentation. God's grace can be obtained only through love and by another means. It is the only Raja Marga, Royal Palm. Students should develop faith that their lives will be sanctified by trading the Royal Path. Uh, just to pause, you know, so as Swami has said, uh, I think recently also in a previous lesson also we have looked at, uh, looked at uh, Sajjana Sevanam Vina. Okay. Uh, Samsaro Dari, just to go back. Samsara Sagaro Dari, Sajjanam Sevanam Vina. It's a very uh, common word Swami, common saying Swami repeats. So that Swami is re referring to as love. As you can see, Swami is talking about then and he's talking about love. He is also saying that just reading, uh, just doing any good thing or having one of these, uh, whether it's darshan or sambhashan or uh, sparshan, Alone is not enough. You have to have all three, also Swami says. So which is what actually the words from uh, Shankaracharya says. Okay. Trijagati bhavarnavatarane eka nauka. Okay. So sajjana sangati is what Swami says. Um, so we will continue with the next verse. Which is the fourteenth verse in Bajagovintam? Jatilo mundi lunchita kesha kasha yambara bahu krita vesha pashanna picha na pashati mudho hudara nimittam bahu krita vesha. Jatilo mundi lunjita kesha kasha yambara bahu krita vesha pashanna pichana pashyati mudho hudara nimittam bahu krita vesha jatilo mundi lunjita kesha kasha yambara bahu krita vesha pashanna pichana pashyati mudho hudara nimittam bahu krita vesha Uh, just to look at any pronunciation aspects, Jatilo Mundi Lunchita Lunchita Kesha. There are no aspirated consonants here. In the next line, Kashayam Bara Bahukrita Vesha. The sh is uh, a cerebral sh. Kashayam Bara. Kasha. Uh, there are three shas as you, three. Ushmana, so the sa, sh, and sh in Sanskrit. This one is called the cerebral sh. That means the tongue has to bend and point towards the roof of the mouth. Kashayambara, Bahukrit, Ve, Shaha. Just pay attention to that. The third line, Pashyanapi, Chana, Pashyati, Mudho. This Udho uh, is the fourth letter in the Dha varka, a tha varka, 
So it has to be aspirated. Even the first one, we have to go with them, the same dha, fourth one. In the last line, uh, there are no aspirated consonant. Just pay attention to the ve shaha, the last uh, letter, sha. Okay. Uh, let's look at uh, Sandhi split. I changed the way I have uh, presented, so I hope it's okay. Jatilo is actually Jatilaha. The Visarga becomes O because, as you can see from all the practice, the Visarga can become ir. Quite often you will see it. Or it can take on U or O. Okay. So in this case, Jatilo. Um, then also it becomes is ish and so on, depending on uh, what letter follows it. Okay, Jatilaha is actually Jatilo. Mundi, Lunchita Keshaha. Lunchita Keshaha, there is no change to Sandhi, but I have uh, put a hyphen just so that you look at the individual words in a compound word. Lunchita Keshaha. In the next uh, line, it's just one compound, long compound word. There are distinct five words. Kashaya, Ambara, Bahu, Krita, Veshara. Kashaya and Ambara. Ya plus A becomes A. Ya. Okay. The A in the Ya plus A which follows makes it longer. So that's how you get Ya plus A becomes Ya. Kashaya, Ambara. There are no other changes due to internal sandhi. Ambara, Bahu, Krita, Vesha. There are no changes. In the next uh, third line, Pashyan Api. It can be split into Pashyan and Api. Uh, you may wonder why there are two ends and one N went away. Um, so one of the sandhis where uh, Sometimes the words, the letter doubles. Pashyan Api. Um, I think in, in, in Tamil also, sometimes we will put uh, an addition uk, up, and so on. Okay, so a new letter comes in due to something. But when the Pashyan Api is split, it's Pashyan and Api. Chana Pashyati Mudho. The Mudho is also due to Sandhi only, otherwise it's a Mudaha. Okay. Mudaha has become Mudho because of Sandhi. Then in the next uh, word, there are two, actually two words. He, Udharanimittam. Udharanimittam means one compound word. Um, so, He, Udharanimittam. It's become Hudharanimittam. That's E plus U becomes U. Okay, so that's how you become Q. Okay. Hudara Nimittam is split into He Udara Nimittam. The last word is also a compound word, Samasa, but there are no Sandhi related changes internally in the word. Bahu, Krita, and Veshaha. Okay, those are three distinct words. Let's look at the meaning. Jatilaha. Jatilaha. Uh, you have heard family with the word jata. Jata means, you know, uh, the hair is actually put, you know, they usually put uh, some secretions from trees and, you know, or glue, you can say. And the uh, hair is tangled up or, you know, made into clumps or clotted. Okay. Jatilaha means one who has. Oh, I'm sorry. So, one who has clotted or entangled hair. Okay. So, you know, you know, many people who take sannyasa or, you know, they become uh, around renunciates, you know, some of them have the tradition of uh, having clotted hair, jata mudi. The next word is mundi. 
Mundi means hair which is shaven. Okay. Some people have tangled hair. Others have shaven heads. So actually this verse is uh, describing various uh, people who consider themselves spiritual. You can see just before this Sajjana Seva, you know, uh, Sangati was mentioned. Now somebody say, you watch out who you are associating with, Chatri. Mundi, Nunchita Kesha. Nunchita means to pluck out the hair. Uh, having the hair plucked out. This tradition exists among the Jaina Gurus. You know, they, they don't even cut the hair or shave. They actually pluck the hair out by the root. Lunchita Kesha. So the hair, one having the hair plucked out. Kashaya Ambara. Kashaya means ochre. Oh. Ambara means cloth. So some people have ochre robes. Bahukrita Vesha. Bahukrita means many. Dan. Krita means dan. Vesha. Vesha means putting on some facade, you know, putting on a, uh, taking on a form. Um, I couldn't find any good English word, so I put the word facade. So the external looks of someone. It's Vesha is, as you know, in a drama, somebody takes on a role and puts on uh, various uh, makeup and uh, facades to look like that character. So this verse is saying these are different forms which people take. Some people have hair, matted, matted hair. Uh, some people shave, some people pluck out hair and they wear okaro. This are all various facades which people put on. Okay. Pashyan. Pashyan means someone who has seen. Okay. Pashyat is the root word. Pashyan means one who has seen. Or seer. Okay. One who sees. Api, do. Pashyan api means do, one is a seer. Also, cha means also. Na pashyati, does not see. Mudaha. Mudaha is a fool. Mudaha na pasyati. A fool does not see. Pasyan napi. Even though the person has seen, is a seer. Swami uses this word quite often. Pasyan napi. Na pasyati mudaha. In the last line, he means indeed or certainly, okay, it's an emphasis, he. Udara nimitta, udara means stomach, nimitta means for the sake of, udara nimitta, for the sake of the stomach, bahu krita vesha, again the bahu krita appears, which was in the second line, it's appearing in the fourth line also. How could we put on many facades of cups? So it is a warning against associating all kinds of gurus or saints or sages. Uh, Shankaras Charyas, disciples warning. Okay. Uh, I will just, I think I put a summary. So let's look at the summary. There are many facades. That's Mahukrita Vesha. Those with clotted hair, those with shaven heads, those who pluck their hair, and those who wear ochre robes. So these are there are many facades seen in this world. The fool certainly does not see, though is a seer. The person, even the sometimes people have seen may not be seen because they, they don't see. Indeed, all the many facades are for the sake of the stomach. So even many of these sannyasins who put on this Vesha, 
the Vaisha are actually doing it for their own stomach, for their own existence, is what Swami says. Even though they may pretend to be the seers, so they may even have seen, they are not, they have not really seen. Okay, so this is something which Swami says. So in the, you can look at the previous verse and this verse almost together that one has to discriminate and find the really good people. So this is one reason. So as you can see, uh, and maybe this is a slightly off topic, that's where we go to places where such people gather. Um, this is one reason Swami also mentioned everyone to uh, his own incarnation, he says, everyone come to Prashantana, be connected to Prashantana. Because that's a place where good people would gather. Because many people can say, oh, I can be independent, I know what to do. So if you go to the previous verse where Swami has said, there can be even people who can be discoursing on things. But that alone is not good enough. Because they may not be able to find the Ultimate, because just by reading books, people can talk. You can do discourse. People can do lots of good sadhana. You know, uh, none of them will help. You know, that's what in the previous uh, excerpt Swami said. Good people, sajjanam sevam. You have to, one has to find good people and listen and spend time with them. You have to have all three for yourself. You have to uh, uplift yourself from the existence, ocean of existence. Uh, there are some excerpts. Uh, let's look at them quickly. Rajasic food generates virulent thoughts. By consuming non-vegetarian food, we develop brutal mentalities. Those who are practicing meditation must abstain from meat. We should also remember constantly that ahimsa or non-violence is the supreme dharma. It is sin to kill innocent animals for the sake of filling our stomachs. We must remember that God dwells in all creatures. Isha vasyam idam sarvam. All this is pervaded by God says Isha Upanishad. The truth of this aphorism can be experienced through meditation. Udhara nimittam bahukrita vesha. For the sake of the stomach, men don different guises. Like a chameleon, they change their colors according to the demands of the situation. They become opportunists and hypocrites. In the end, they try to justify their opportunism and rationalize their hypocrisy. They delude themselves this policy by this policy of expediency and time serving. Such people can never follow the path of meditation. It should not be supposed that the path of meditation is easy and artificial. If the NICC, why should the great sages of our country have mortified themselves for the attainment of moksha? Some modern techniques of meditation claim to achieve nirvikalpa samadhi instantly. Dhyana is mistaken for temporary freedom from worries. If this sort of anesthesia is needed, one can become tipsy by drinking liquor. Dhyana is not a state of inebriety or amnesia. Dhyana is a state of complete identification with one's dhyaya or object of meditation. It is a state of total spiritual empathy. Today, many artificial and distorted methods of meditation are being popularized. Student must be aware of them because they are all unprofitable and potentially dangerous. So this was uh, an excerpt from 
the 1979 summer course discourses, the 17th discourse from there. So Swami is again doing the same thing, warning everyone who go after people who are actually doing what they call spirituality for their own financial greed and need. And they give techniques which can temporarily forget uh, worries, but they will not take one to ultimate destination. Okay, so that's a warning which Shankara also has given and Swami also has given. Now, we will look at the, uh, another excerpt. Manifesting one's inner divinity does not mean producing something new. Divinity is inherent in man. It is called Swabhava, one's true nature, the Atmic nature. It is the Atma that confers all powers on man. Those who bemoan their weaknesses are not aware of the inherent potential and are not putting it to I think it's wrong. Right use. Okay, sorry. The first feeling which one has to get rid of is the identification of his physical form with his real self. Those who ask, where is God, do not realize that all they see in this cosmos is a manifestation of the divine. That is why the scripture declares, Pashyan na picha na Pashyati Muru. Even while seeing, the foolish one does not see. Man is all the time seeing the universe around him and yet declares he has not seen God. What is the form of the cosmos? Is it not divine? You are seeing the divine in the form of the physical universe. In the Bhagavad Gita, this cosmic form of the Lord is described as Vishwa Virata Rupa. What is Vishwa? It is the whole cosmos. The Vishwa Virata Rupa is the collective form of everything in the universe. No attempt is made to understand the inner meaning of such expressions as Vishwa Virata Rupa. The intellect is used to misinterpret words and create confusion. What is needed is understanding through the heart. Even a highly evolved person like Arjuna confessed to Krishna that the mind is ever wavering and fickle. Are the intellectuals of today with all their degrees greater than Arjuna? Not at all. Above all degrees and intellectual attainments, one needs the grace of God. Krishna recognized Arjuna as his devotee. That's the supreme accomplishment. Okay, so these are two excerpts. Now we will look at the next verse, which is the 15th verse. Angam galitam palitam mundam dashana vihinam jatam tundam vriddho yati grihitva dandam Tadapina muncha tyasha pindam. Hangam galitam palitam mundam. Dasana vihinam jatam tundam. Vridho yati grihitva dandam. Tadapina muncha tyasha pindam. Hangam galitam palitam mundam. Dasana vihinam jatam tundam. Vridho yati. Grihitva dandam tadapina munjat yasha pindam. Um, looking at uh, words, letters to pay attention to, in the first line there are no aspirated consonants or any difficult consonant. Second one also the same. In the third line, the first word, vridho, dha is the compound consonant, the second letter. In that the second letter in that compound is an aspirated concept. Fourth letter in the Tavarga. 
the and the yud the the third letter in the third varga or third class of sounds and fourth one are in this compound consonant so it has to be aspirated vridha okay is the way to pronounce so in this case the vridho yati gruhitva dandam tadapina muncha yasha pindam there are no aspirated consonants so it should be easier to read let's look at uh, sandhi split angam galitam palitam untam no change dashana vihinam jatam untam no changes no sandhi related changes the first word is a compound word samasa i have just separated uh, the distinct words within that samasa with the hyphen in the third line vridha has become vridho visarga has become o so that's a u what happens is where the the visarga becomes u so a plus u becomes o okay that's the way it works so that's a vridha become vridho yati krihitva dandam no change in the last line the first word tadapi is actually composed of two words tat and api tadapi and the third word is also very long word it's composed of two a long compound word it's composed of two distinct words one is munchati the other one is asha pendam asha pendam itself is a uh, compound word i would say asha and pendam are the two distinct words in that compound word okay munchati asha pendam we look at the what word meaning angam means limb our limbs you know it's galitam impaired or becoming angam galitam means the limbs are becoming weak our hands and legs they are all becoming weak palitam munda palitam means hair has either become gray or munda Uh, all the hairs lost the entire this uh, this description is about old age the limbs are becoming weak the hair is turning gray or it becomes you become bald bald dashana vihina dashana is teeth vihinam means without without teeth means becoming toothless dashana vihinam jatam tundam dahana vihinam jatam tundam tundam is mouth uh, tundam is also sometimes we in vakra tunda we in the ganapati uh, shloka uh, tunda also is your nose but as elephant's nose is its trunk or it trunk is one part of the uh, mouth so tundam in this case it is mouth dashana vihinam jatam tunda means the, the uh, jatam also can mean in its original state the mouth in our, in our life our original state of the mouth was toothlessness so at the end of life also all the teeth disappear and we have an empty mouth without any teeth dashana so all these are signs of old age vridha vridha means an old person vridha yati means he moves walks yati is move and walk grihitva having taken hold of something okay. grihitva having held having taken hold dandam stick so that means he needs a stick to walk an old person who is limbs are weak who is either graying or he is bald his teeth are all fallen and he has an empty stomach without teeth and he needs a stick to walk tat api even then then also you know even then tat api generally that's a, it's like a phrase which is used tat api even then na munchati 
he does not abandon, does not give up, does not let go, or does not renounce. Asha Pinda. Asha means desire. Pindam means a lump. Actually, the body also is Pindam. Body also represented by a lump. This he does not renounce this Asha Pindam. Renounce means he still wants to go along with the needs of the bodies or wants of the bodies. An old person, when everything has, the entire body is sort of becoming almost decaying, they still don't want to give up their desires. This is the uh, summary of the verse. I've not given a summary because it's sort of evident. Uh, so we we'll look at an excerpt of Swami's discourse. I've taken an entire discourse. I hope you all bear almost an entire discourse. Uh, I hope you do. It's, we have time to go through it. Side. Shankara always taught pure and undiluted, undiluted Advaita and he even encouraged Upasana in the four centers he established. This practice is continued even today. The people in charge there accept and participate in offerings to the Lord. By such offerings and puja, devotees have been attempting to get the grace of the Lord even in these centers of Advaita. Not only is there a meaning in performing such upasanas, they want common people to do the same thing in their daily lives. This is the purpose of participating in upasana. So. This is, the this is the purpose of participating in Upasana. There are two kinds of people, the Jnanis and ordinary people. The ordinary people can do the right thing by looking at and imitating the path followed by the Jnanis. It's only in the aspect of the body, mind and the daily life that these three philosophies, Dvaita, Advaita and Vishishtadvaita were being taught. From the point of view of the body, the path of karma or work has was, work was taught. From the point of view of the mind, the path of bhakti or devotion was taught. From the point of view of one's own daily life, the path of wisdom or jnana was taught. Therefore, in order to enable the person to practice these, Shankara, Madhvacharya and Ramanuja taught the three paths which can be called the royal paths for humanity to attain salvation. One must recognize the purpose and the essence of these three approaches. It is not correct to see only the outward differences and apparent contradictions between them. If we follow the pure non-dualistic path taught by Shankara and regard everything in the world as Brahman, then we have to ask ourselves, what is it that we are able to see in the ordinary human life? Only when we take the other approaches will we be able to understand the human aspects of divinity. It's only from a superficial point of view that these paths appear different. But from the point of view of the ultimate goal, these three are one and the same. It is necessary for us to accept the upasana or the work aspect having this common goal in mind. While recognizing the importance of the karma marga and involving ourselves in the necessary duties that we have to perform, we should also realize the importance of the bhakti marga and know that we can reach the Lord by the path of devotion. Without inner cleanliness, whatever work you might do will become waste. It will not yield any results. What Shankara taught was that we should have bhakti 
for devotion towards the Lord in view of the temporary and transient nature of the world. In this material world, some kinds of desires and diseases relating to the senses are natural and they appear in human beings. In order to cure these diseases, it is necessary to take the appropriate medicine. There is a small story in support of this. There was a housewife who had great faith in the Lord and whenever she had time, she used to take a japa mala and chant the name of the Lord. In this manner, with the idea of sanctifying the time that is available to her, she used to always utter the name of the Lord. She was feeling that her body was like the container and her prema like the oil in the lamp. She thought that divinity was a jyoti or a bright lamp. In this manner, she was spending her life with a view to making it useful. She came to the ultimate conclusion that even while the lamp of life still glowing in her, she should be able to fulfill the duties that are entrusted to her. If this light is extinguished, she would not be able to perform her duties. Hence, she thought that even while living, she must make the best use of it and attain salvation. Her husband who saw this kind of devotion and attachment to the Lord on the part of his wife, told her that she will not be able to find time for looking after the family if she spends all the time in the contemplation of the Lord. He was also of the opinion that they should think of the Lord only after they grow much older. The wife did not agree with this contention. She argued that they should think of the Lord only when one is physically and mentally sound and not in the old age when these faculties are failing. While strengthening her own belief and conviction in this manner, she was from time to time trying to convince her husband. Once while she was alone and her husband was in a good mood, she told him that the body was temporary like a water bubble. It's not known how long the body will survive and it is wrong to go on postponing one's duties to a later period in life. Maya is something which will make one forget the purpose for which one has come into this world. To forget the Lord is due to Maya. Therefore, one should think of the Lord while one is still strong and should not postpone it to a later date because the body may disappear any time. On the other hand, the husband was arguing that she was out of her mind and asked her to think about who was going to feed them if they spent all their time thinking of the Lord. He asked her if the Lord would come and look after the children and attend to the other needs if they spend their time in the thought of the Lord. He said that they will have to earn money because no one will look after them if they do not have sufficient wealth. He was thus trying to divert the attention of his wife. But the wife who had a total commitment and faith in the Lord said that the Lord who had sown the seed will also water the plant. God, has given, God who has given us this life will also provide food for us. If you spend all your time thinking that you have to find food for yourself, you are just like an animal. The one difference between man and other animals is that man has wisdom which the animals lack. This is the only faculty that distinguishes man from an animal. If you always talk of finding food, you are behaving just like an animal. Such line of thinking on the part of his wife made a deep impression on his mind and finally he came to the conclusion that these statements were really true. However, he told her that he had to think of the marriages of the children and other such commitments. He said that after these commitments were fulfilled, he would think only of the Lord. He said that he does not have faith. He, he said that he does have faith and devotion, but he has other duties as well. That they had gone in such a such conversation. 
As days passed, the hospital contracted a dreaded disease and the lady had to consult various doctors and specialists. In those difficult days, she went to the bedside of her husband and told him to think of the Lord, at least under those circumstances, and try to earn his grace. She said that the grace of the Lord was the best medicine for the husband. The husband had great faith in the doctors and so he forced her to call the doctors again. One doctor who was liked by the husband came and after examination gave a bottle of some liquid and told the wife to give the mixture to the husband three times a day. This was told by the doctor and the husband saw the bottle being handed over to the wife. He knew the instructions that had been given. The wife took the bottle but did not give the husband the medicine regularly. After three days, the husband asked the wife why the medicine had not been given according to instructions. The wife had a very good opportunity to teach a lesson to the husband. She said that after all, the doctor had given a medicine but why should it be taken in the manner in which it was prescribed? It can as well be swallowed in one go. The husband said that medicine should be taken when the disease was there, but what's the use of taking it later? Then the wife explained that on the same analogy, we should take the medicine for the bhavaroga, the birth death cycle, immediately after we are born and not postpone it to a later date. He was told that the medicine given by the doctor was for the physical illness, which he got for a few days ago, but for the bhavaroga, which starts right from the birth itself, the medicine is constant contemplation on the Lord. The husband was convinced at last that he started contemplation seriously on the Lord. Consequently, his disease was quickly cured. Since then, both of them were very happy. Students, boys and girls. Our life is like that. As soon as we are born, our material desires start. Hence, it's very necessary for us to constantly think of the Lord, to acquire happiness and bliss right from the time when these desires crop up. To take the view that you will think of the Lord only when you are in difficulties is foolish. It is not correct to postpone thinking of the Lord till you retire from service. We must begin to think of the Lord early. That is why it is said, start early, drive slowly and reach safely. If you think that you can think of God after you grow old, it is not right. When the messengers of Yama, the God of death, come and drag you to your end at the time when your body is put outside the house just before your death, at the time when the anguishing cries of your wife and children are being heard, is it possible for you to utter the name of the Lord? You should think of the Lord while you, are ha you have all your faculties under your control and when you have all your mental and physical strength unimpaired. You must earn his grace when you are young and store it for the future. Prema Swarupas when you are still young, your body and mind are like fruits which are just right. When your body is in good and right condition, you must surrender the body to God. Will he accept it if you surrender it to him after it becomes bad, old and rotten? From now on, surrender yourself to the Lord. Do good work with the body. Have good ideas in your mind and purify your thoughts. It will then be possible for you to earn the grace of God. Such good deeds and the grace thus earned will stand you in good stead in your old age when you can do nothing. If today you are prepared to do good work, then the kind of happiness which you want will be available. If you postpone thinking of the Lord till you become old, there is no guarantee that you will earn His grace. If you go early enough, in the morning to a hotel and buy a ticket for your lunch, you are sure of your meal whether you go at 12 o'clock or at 1 o'clock because you have purchased the ticket early enough. 
if you go for lunch at one o'clock without buying a ticket early, the hotel keeper may inform you that lunch is not available. Therefore, try and purchase the ticket for God's grace, which you will want in your old age while you are young. With that ticket purchased early, it will be available where, whenever you go. But if you think that you will buy the ticket for the grace of the Lord when you grow old, it may not be available for you. The availability of the Lord's grace will depend upon your luck and fortune. Students, boys and girls, the young age in which you are now, uh, you now are, in, is a sacred age. That you are born as a human being is a special gift given, by, given to you by the Lord. All the animals in the world want to become human beings. If you do not use this gift given by the Lord to earn His grace, in this sacred age, it will not be possible when you grow older. As I told you in the beginning, I intend to speak to you about the aspect of Bharat from tomorrow. I thought that between these two, namely Brahman and Bharat, certain ordinary things which relate to daily life should also be communicated to you. And therefore, today's discourse has been about matters which relate to normal daily life. Uh, this is a discourse given by Swami during the 1974 summer showers. This uh, discourse number 16. So as you can see, this verse of Shankara basically says we cannot wait till we are old. Because if we have not given up desires when we are young, we will not be able to give up desires when we are old. And... Um, uh, so that is in a gist, uh, is the verse from Adi Shankara and uh, Swami has nicely explained it to us. So I'll stop here. Uh, if there are any questions, we can discuss as we can close the session. I guess there are no questions. Uh, if there are no questions, uh, we can close the session for today. Sairam everyone. Uh, we will meet again next week. Samastha Loka Sukheno Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukheno Bhavantu Samastha Loka Sukheno Bhavantu Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Sairam everyone.